Howdy peeps and welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're going to talk about breeding and raising bristlenose plecos. Now a few people have asked me how I do it, what I do, for some reason. Um, so I thought I'd do a quick video and explain what I do. So this is my 15 gallon fluval flex which is where all the bristlenoses I've had so far have been bred from. Um, we've had a bit of a change in here recently, <coughs> excuse me, i.e. this morning, with the addition of a male super red to so the female super red, and they're obviously both hiding up right now. Let's see if we can find either. They're not in their normal hot. Oh, Ginger's not in her normal hidey hole. Uh, they're not in the cave, are they? That would be a. <laughs> so, yeah, believe me, there are a male and a female in here somewhere. Ah, oh, there we go. There's the boy down the back. Ginger is, oh there she is. Excuse the watermarks on the tank, but there's Ginger. Female super red long fin. So, once your bristle nose is giddy on, as it were, um, now, assuming of course you have somewhere suitable for them to lay, which in my case in here, excuse the glow light down here that can't tell what species it wants to be or colour, um, we have a pleco breeding cave. Now you can use all sorts of things, uh, flower watering spikes, bits of PVC pipe, anything like that will do the trick. It doesn't have to be a special product. And once your bristle noses do it and lay eggs, your first sign is that you don't see the male anymore. Now, usually between four and five days, <coughs> the eggs will hatch in the little wrigglers with their yolk sacs. Now, what I do then, purely to make them easier to deal with, because you can probably imagine trying to catch dozens and dozens of baby plecos in a tank that's planted yeah it's it's not easy so what i do is once i notice that the babies are wrigglers rather than just eggs um, i grab the cave normally fight the males to get him out of the cave because he doesn't want to leave he's looking after his babies and then i empty the cave into a breeder box in the same tank which has got a bit of wood and a baby java fern in there the gravel comes from whatever was in the bottom of the uh, cave when I emptied it out it can take a bit of emptying out they can get stuck in there well they do stick to the cave but once you've got all the babies in there I mean you like to excuse the snails and so we literally just got the breeder box an air stone, about three million trumpet snails, and you can probably see there's some baby ple baby plecklets in there at the moment. Not too many. It was quite a small batch, and I may have been inadvertently forgotten to feed them. Um, yeah, it, it, that was a thing. Try not to do that. Uh, literally, just one or two algae wafers every day. Now a lot of the breeder boxes do have fairly wide slits in them and that's the reason we've got the uh, weather mesh silicon and whatever onto the outside so they don't escape. Now I keep the bristle noses or keep the babies in there until there's another lot in the cave at which point the ones in there come out and go into a grow out tank. So, do we do a fade to black? No, let's just wander over there. The place isn't looking too carnage-like. Oh, shrimp. <laughs> just a quick, quick looky at some of the shrimpies. Yeah, just a few. And there's another pleco cave. Oh, and there's my big boy, Spotty. He's the dad of all the bristle noses I've produced so far. And somewhere in here is... Bertie, his previous girlfriend, <coughs> he got moved out. Alright, so once the bristle noses come out of the breeder box, 
they go into let's pull the curtain across see if we can kill some of the glare that helped a bit so once they're out they go into these so just five gallon cheapy tanks heater sponge filter and for the placo tanks they've got one of the fluval u ones in there as well just to add a bit of extra filtration because you know placos poop a lot uh, that sponge filter was cleaned on Monday, it's now Friday. So yeah. <laughs> so once I go into the in here, that's where they'll stay until I need the tank for something else. Um, and I try to keep the age groups separate. So this is one spawn. This is the, the spawn beforehand. And as you can see, we've got some quite chunky ones in there and some still rather tiny, but you know, they'll all grow eventually. And once they start getting a bit big for in here, I then move them down, way down, Ugh, to the secret weapon. Not really. It's just a 10 gallon tub. <laughs> With... Two filters designed or meant for much larger tanks purely because I can have anywhere up to 200 bristle noses in here at a time. Now, typically, they're all hiding up at the moment. But I know, and another one of the things I feed them cucumber or courgette, zucchini. So, if we lift up a piece of wood, there's already a few on the top I can see. If we lift this up and take it out. You'll see them all running for cover. There's probably still some. Yeah, there's still some in there. Yeah, you can see there's a couple of quite sizable ones in there. That long fin is looking rather, rather gorgeous. And so as long as they've got a bit of wood, plenty of filters, food, and a bit of mulm, they're perfectly happy. They don't take any more looking after than that. I say this one, literally just chuck a few algae wafers in every day and job done. Then once they get to the magic size, which in the case of bristly noses is around an inch. Well, the shops say an inch. I try and go inch and a half. Uh, that that way the fish are bigger, stronger, better able to deal with the, the trials and tribulations of moving different tanks, different houses, as it were. Also, try not to get. Malaysian trumpet snails in the tank. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to have a clear out in here because there's bloody hundreds of them again. So yeah, as I say, once I get up to size, I get taken to the local fish store. Yeah, in my case, I am known now as the bristlenose guy. And they get sold. The same goes for basically everything in this rack. Uh, <laughs> Next one I really want to get rid of is these guys. I say get rid of, sell. Um, it's cribs, and I've got, still got 20 or 30 in there. Uh, but yeah, you know, numbers are going down. We're gradually selling them off as they get bigger. And there we go. Sharpie's basic guide on breeding bristle noses. As long as the adults are happy and old enough, and you know you've got a boy and a girl. And they got a cave. Yeah, at some point they'll put on the barrier white and get it on. And once that happens, I mean, it can happen every four weeks. So be prepared. You might get overrun if you're trying to breed bristle noses. But if you're not trying and it does happen, this is more of a guide of how to keep them alive and how to grow them on. And yes, so. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget the usual like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. All the things they know, I know it's kind of passe, cliche, but they do help the channel out. You know, the more you get, the further up the YouTube rankings you go as for when someone searches for something, your video is more likely to turn up. Because you can't do every video on something nobody's ever done a video on before really quite difficult now so anyway with a wet hand thanks for watching enjoy your bristle noses and your hobby 
Peace out. That way around. Rock on. Bye bye from me and Cookie Monster and the bristles. Bye bye.